I'm a fatty, and you can call me fatty, but no matter what you want to call me, welcome back to my Astroneer Megabase tutorial series. In the last episode, we went over the modular power setup that I used to power this base. In this episode, we're going to dive into the meat and potatoes of the base, our automated sortation system and printing room. First, I'll walk you through the general layout. Then, we're going to dive into the auto arm alignment, the logic that we need for our setup, and how you can build this setup as well. After that, I'll show you the printer room with our custom resource ordering system and walk you through how I set this up, and then I'll give you, hopefully, enough of an understanding that you can set this up on your own home world. Once we finish all that, I will show you what it looks like once you put it all together. To start everything off, we have our rail right here that is going to feed in from the upper floor, uh, which would which should be coming in the next episode. But all of our finished resources are gonna come down here and then stop at this train station. From there, they'll be unloaded and they'll go down this belt here and each of the resources will pull off at its designated location. The inner portion of this belt is where we're going to be doing our resource ordering system. You can see it here. Uh, this belt here is going to be the one that pulls everything uh, over to the printer room. So we've got two separate belts for that and I will show you how to set that up. As you can see, we've got two belts. We've got the purple belt and the green belt. The purple belt is going to be the induction for the system. So everything is going to move down here from the train station. And then this auto arm here is going to pull off the designated resource and put it in the canister. The green system is going to run parallel and this is going to pull off the resource whenever we want to use it so if we need uh, if we need compound or whatever's in here then this auto arm will be triggered and then unloaded onto here and then this belt will continuously be running to pull everything over to the printer room one thing to note is that this auto arm here uh, it has to load into the canister right here at the top so make sure that this circle here is facing the auto arm and then it's not too far away. Um, if you get it too close here, it will not be able to put it up there. So you have to make sure that it's back just a couple of, just a, just a little bit. Um, and then that should be able to place into there. And then this can be as close as you want and it'll just pull from the bottom there. Also make sure that your belts do not overlap. So uh, this is all just going the same way so when you're facing this way looking at the canister you should have green 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 and a blue and then this would be for the next one so there's three greens and then a blue so one two three and then the blue and then one two three and then the blue on the corners you don't necessarily have to do it the way that i did it i think i did it a different way each time but i generally just try to keep the middle platforms or the middle row lined up with the middle row on the next side just so that i know that when i'm dealing with these belts I don't have to worry about which one I'm working on because I know that the outer belt is going to be the induction belt and then the inner belt is the printing room belt. Before we get into all of the logic portion, uh, I wanna talk about best practices for pins because this is a pretty in-depth process and uh, I, I did have to redo almost all of the logic in the printer room after we initially set it up. So just don't make my mistake and make sure you're paying attention to this. So I've got a repeater here. This pin, um, I would say if you can, always tether before you stick it in just so that if you do have to redo those, then it's not a huge hassle to run back and forth. But make sure you put it in the side of the switch, uh, not on top. If it's on the switch face, it does not sit fully sometimes. And then also for the auto arms, you want to put it in the platform and then put the auto arm over the top of it because if it sits inside the auto arm, sometimes if I put this here on the back of the auto arm, as it's turning around, this will just be floating and sometimes that messes up when you uh, when you load up your game. So make sure to connect it into the platform itself. Make sure it's pointed down into the platform and that'll just activate the platform itself. And then on the repeaters, you want to get it on the side here as low as possible because if you get it in the front which is what i did i did it like this you can see that it's just floating there and then once that's once that loads back up it is not connected to that anymore so i had to change it so that it's pinned into the side and then you can stack that up no problem for the repeaters for those of you that are also ocd like me they will go into right in between here so you want these to go right in between 
and then you want for this one you want this to be right on that on that straight pin and then when you have them all on the board the pins are pretty much invisible on everything except for the lights which it feels good to have all those pins hidden nothing too complicated so now we're going to talk about the logic the green belt is going to be left on at all times and it can run as fast as it wants because there's not really any need to pull anything off because that's just going to all end up the same place back at the printer room so all we need here is we need this auto arm here that's pulling things out of the canister to turn on and off when we order resources from the printer room so these auto arms in the middle are not going to need anything and neither will these pulling off because that can pull off and load into the canister as fast as it wants however for this purple belt what we are going to need is we are going to need a delay setup that will turn these auto arms on and off and give time for the auto arm to pull off the resources that it needs i think we are ready to get into it then so first we're going to talk about first we're going to talk about this all right so what we have here is we have our light that will indicate whether we are still pulling that resource so if that auto arm is enabled then that light will be on uh, we've got our resource for reference we've got a delay repeater which i'll talk about in just a minute and then we've got our button repeater our button repeater is going to trigger the auto arm and then it'll count and count so since these are in series then what we're going to have is it'll be two times two is going to be the smallest number that we can have so the most we can have would be obviously eight times eight for 64 is the most that we can order so these delay repeaters are all set to a one cycle delay now this consolidates everything so that the only the only signal that's leaving this board is going through the delay repeater so if anything if any logic happens on the front it goes through the delay repeater so i don't really have to worry about the exchange of signals between the back and the front because it's all either here or it's on the back side and if the delay repeater is wrong then i can fix that but i haven't really had any issues with disconnecting recently so we will uh we'll go ahead and get into the logic all right so the bare minimum that you're going to need going into this is going to be a button repeater two count repeaters and two delay repeaters this third delay repeater is optional but i really like using it so we're going to leave that in for this one and then you will also need two power sensors uh the first one set to power gained or lost and then the second is going to be set to power gained only so how we're going to do this is we're going to put the button repeater we're going to connect this to the delay repeater and then we'll connect the count repeater to the count repeater and then this count repeater also to the delay repeater so everything is feeding through here and then this signal is going to go into the side of this power switch now we don't have any power so let me grab qt so we're going to run these through so it'll be power switch and that's going to be in the off position to start with then we'll run this through here run this through here okay so this is what we've got and then i'm also going to put this light here so everything goes through this delay repeater here so once we trigger this the delay repeater will turn on this power switch and enable our circuit now the way that i like to think about this is this enable switch is similar to a, a dam across a river so when that dam is opened then the power can flow now this looks complicated but it's actually not that bad so what this is is we have our two delay repeaters these are creating the same cycle that we created over on the other side just turning the auto arms on and off now that is uh i like to think of it as the the water wheel so it turns as soon as the river starts flowing now the only reason we have this is that when the cycle is triggered again then we're going to have power go to this power sensor and toggle that on and that power gain trigger is going to track the number of cycles that we have that's how we're going to order a specific number of resources and then this light just lets us know whether or not the circuit is enabled so that is everything that we've got all right so we've got our power coming through here the default position for this is going to be in the on position when power is gained uh let's let's set this up real quick so we're gonna have 25 on this one and this one doesn't have to be a very big number at all uh, because we're not waiting for anything to happen in the second cycle like we are over here where we're waiting for this other auto arm to grab it so five is fine on this one you could do even less but i just like the round number uh so we've got five here 25 here so what we're going to do here is we're going to take this power gained pin we're going to 
tether it and then connect it into there. So that's our first one. Then we're going to have this one, which I am going to put down here. And that's going to branch up to the power switch. And then it is also going to start the next circuit. And then this one here is going to come down right there. And the only thing that it has to do is turn the power back off. So 25 cycle is going to be started off of the power gain. Then we're going to start this second cycle and we're going to turn the power off. Then this is going to turn the power back on. And then when the power goes back on, the power sensor will start the cycle again. As soon as we have power going into this, you'll see the cycle start. And then it's turning off and back on just like it should. The way that we're triggering this is with the delay repeater as with when we press the button. This time it's going to be the count, the count repeaters that are turning it off. So we're going to branch this segment pin. Remember, this is the power gain, or in other words, this is our counter to count the cycles. So we're going to take this segment pin, put it in the side of the lower count repeater, and then we should have a working circuit. So now let's try this out. So we've got, we've got it set to two and two, so we should have four total cycles. So let's start off. That's one, that's two, that's three cycles, and that's four cycles. All right, so we know that works correctly. And it does do one extra cycle, but nobody cares, okay. You may have noticed that I forgot to turn the, or plug the light in, so let's try this again. So we've got our button repeater, which is gonna trigger our delay repeater and turn on our enable. Then this will turn on our light, and then we'll start our cycle. Each cycle is going to be counted here, and then kept track of over here on these two count repeaters. So we should have, we've got this set to two and two, so we should see four total cycles. Also notice that since this is enabled, once this goes on, that will be the start of our first cycle. So let's go ahead and go. All right, that's one. That's the second cycle. That's the third. And the fourth, and our light also goes off, so that looks good. Now that we've got our basics set up, I'm gonna show you how to put this into into your actual network. Baddy the editor here. Uh, I was editing my video and I realized that I left out the important piece of how to connect everything to the delay repeater. So this should be uh, almost a mirror image of what we were set up initially. Uh, we've got our power gain lost with the pin over here on the left and then we have uh, on the inner side we have the off cycle which should be set to five and then on the bottom we have the 25 so you're going to take the pin from the 25 uh, delay repeater and then from the power gained or loss which you can see is right there you'll connect both of those in and then run that uh, i have that connect connected to a Delay repeater here was just a cycle of one to consolidate the signals and then just ran that out. I also wanted to show you how to integrate everything. So right here I did batteries. That is because we're going to need 28 different lanes of power. And we could do that with some weird geometry with platforms. Or we could have 27 splitters or 28 batteries. So I opted for the batteries because it looks a lot cleaner. So you can see I've got battery power and everything just like we set up. And then I try to keep my pins on the same side every time. So on the bottom side, I have my two delay repeaters on the right side of the unit with power gains lost on the left side. And then I have it swapped for the top. So I've got my two delay repeaters there with the pin on the right side there. I'm not sure if I mentioned it earlier, but I do like to put the resource on the medium platform just so that it's a lot more clear what we're working with. As you can see, I've got all my delay repeaters running down. I try to run them pretty close together and then I've just run everything out to each of the resources. And then we're gonna go inside real quick. Once again, this is what the board looks like. We've got the light, which I think I might change these for the uh, uh, for the floodlights. I think that might be a good play, just because uh, one thing I noticed is that with these overhead lights, it can be a little bit hard to see which lights are on. So I'm probably gonna switch to these floodlights. So it'll be a light resource nugget, the delay repeater that acts as the central hub for the front panel. Then you have button repeater, count repeater, count repeater. And all these are just, so the button repeater is wired to the delay repeater, count repeater is wired to each other and then to the delay repeater. 
And this is what the front panel looks like. So let's take these resources off real quick. And uh, just so that it is pretty quick, let's go ahead and request aluminum. So we'll request six aluminum. So we'll change that up to three. All right, and we flip it on. And then you can see over here, we've got one, two, three, four, five, and six, and then it should turn off after this cycle here. All right, and there we go, turn, it's turned off. We now have six aluminum here, and then we can do what we want with it. So over here, we have all of the logic powering the belt. My initial setup had 25 and 15. I did end up bumping that up to 20, and a note that I wanted to make is that when I was setting this up, I realized that sometimes these auto arms are going to get slightly off sync. Uh, and I think that's just due to the one sec or the one cycle delay on each of these. I think I've got four or five of them spread throughout. So what I ended up doing is I tried to mitigate that by putting a storage sensor on the rail station and only turning this belt on when there was something to pull off here. But when I did that, it still didn't really fix the problem. It helped it a little bit, but it's more complex than it needs to be for an imperfect solution. So I just scrapped that and ran with this. So sometimes it will bypass the circuit. What we're going to do to fix that is over here, I've got the end of our belt here where the resin pulls off. And then I've got another one here, which I'm going to use to just put something like this here, just a silo here. I eventually want to run a train here and run it back around to the front. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to have this here and then pull off onto here with the exo chips and things like that. And then that also allows you to, uh, if you have more resources than you want or it overflows, you just put it over here and uh, then you'll stick it on the train and it'll run it back up to the front so i do not have that in place yet but that is currently the plan just in case you're wondering here uh rather than pulling the organic in on the train and then clogging it up and risking it uh taking over the train as it produces more than i can handle i've just got my plants here i think i've got nine plants which is enough to feed both the uh the ordering system if i want to order some organic and also uh to keep the carbon busy so that even if I'm still crafting carbon, I am not going to need to worry about not getting enough organic off of the printing belt. With everything we've gone over today, you should now be ready to set this up on your own home world uh, once you once you gather up enough resources for it, of course. But I hope that this video was helpful and that it clarified some things on how to do something like this on your own. There is a lot of information in this, so hopefully uh, if you don't like my exact setup you'll be able to extrapolate it into something else so that you can build your own perfect base i do want to rebuild the mega base or optimize it once the new dlc comes out but i think i'm probably going to try to finish my first mega base tutorial before the dlc and then we'll see what the new dlc brings and then i will do another video building the true mega base, hopefully with all the interplanetary stuff that they got going on and all that jazz. So I appreciate you guys watching until the end, and I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please like the video, drop a comment, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.